Introduction. The aim of the present study is to trace in detail the history of Borojbism, its ideological origins and its evolution, and to assess the significance of the Borojbiste in the Ukrainian Revolution and in the life of the Soviet Ukraine down to the purges of 1943. Before considering the main subject of the study, however, it will be useful to identify briefly the major political parties of the left which, together with the Borojbiste, played a role in Ukrainian history during the period under discussion. The Communist Party Bolshevik of, the U of, of Ukraine, abbreviated CPBU, had per perhaps greater influence among the urban working class of Ukraine than any of the other parties to be mentioned, but its impact on, Ukrainian on the Ukrainian peasantry was negligible. Its strength, however, derived not from the support of the Ukrainian masses, but from the military and administrative apparatus which the Bolsheviks brought to the Ukraine from Russia. The Ukrainian Communist Party Boruch Biste, abbreviated UCPB, was a continuation of the Ukrainian Party of Socialist Revolutionaries, abbreviated UPSR. Toward the end of the year 1917, there emerged within the UPSR a distinct internationalist group, which was ready to subordinate specific Ukrainian demands to the interests of world revolution. In mid-May 1918, at the 4th Congress of the UPSR, the internationalists achieved a short-lived control over the entire party, but immediately following the Congress, the UPSR split into a left and a right wing. Controlling the party's organ, Borjba, or struggle, the internationalists, the, the, le, uh, the left wing, adopted the name Borodbiste. At the same time, they moved ideologically toward Bolshevik, toward Bolshevik communism, a move which was reflected in the new name for their party, which they adopted in March 1919, UPSR, Communist Borodbiste. In August of that year, the party merged with the Ukrainian Social Democratic Workers' Party, left in dependence. To mark its clean break with the socialist revolutionary tradition, the party now took the name Ukrainian Communist Party Borodbiste. Finally, in the spring of 1920, the Borodbiste merged, or united, as it was then termed, with the CPBU, thus providing the latter with many outstanding leaders in the field of Ukrainian culture, men and women who played a prominent part in the CPBU and in the, Uk in the Ukrainian SSR until the purges from 1943. The Ukrainian Communist Party, the so-called Ukapiste, derived from the Ukrainian Social Democratic Workers' Party, USDRP, calling themselves for a while the independent faction of that party. At first openly at war with the Bolsheviks, the Ukapiste became a legal opposition party only at the beginning of 1920. However, by that time, all the important positions in Soviet Ukrainian political life had been filled by members of the older parties in the industrial areas by the CPBU, in the small towns and villages by the Borodbiste. Thus, the, gain, the gains of the Ukapiste among the workers were insignificant, and, there, and they therefore played a less prominent role than the Borodbiste. The party of the Ukrainian anarchists, the followers of Nestor Makhno, which at first glance might appear to be an offshoot of international anarchism imported through Russia, was in reality a typically Ukrainian phenomenon. It had a large following among the peasants of, the, of sovereign Ukraine. The Ukrainian party of left socialist revolutionaries, Boris Biste, was in fact a Ukrainian branch of the Russian party of left socialist revolutionaries, which in turn was a descendant of the Narodna Yavolya, People's War or People's Freedom. The Borg Biste had some influence in left bank Ukraine, that part of, of Ukraine east of the Dnieper River, primarily in the cities but very little in the villages. In addition, there were several smaller groups, the, ma the Maximalists, the Revolutionary Communists, and two leftist Jewish groups, the Communist, the Communist Bund and the Jewish Communist Party. With the exception of the anarchists, all the above-mentioned parties eventually merged with the CPBU. Chapter 1. Historical Antecedents In, approach, in approaching the history of Borojbizim, which has its roots in the pre-revolutionary period, it is imper um, imperative to consider certain characteristics of political life in, the, in Ukraine, which have marked the development of Ukrainian political thought. A dualism pervaded this development from the beginning of the 19th century down to the establishment of Soviet rule in Ukraine. During this entire period, two types of political tendencies and organizations existed side by side, one type regarded itself as Russian and participated in political movements within the imperial framework, the other aimed to preserve and strengthen Ukrainian national individuality. 
The former included the Sovereign, the sovereign Society, the Russian Populists, Narodniki, and the Russian Social Democratic Workers' Party, RSDRP. The latter, the separatist Little Russian Society headed by Vasil Lukashevich, the Society of United Slavs, the Brotherhood of Saints Cyril, Cyril and Methodius, the members of the society Romada, or community, Mikhailo Pidrahomanov, the Revolutionary Ukrainian Party, RUP, and the USDRP. The dichotomy characterized the Ukrainian political life right up to the Soviet period when it finally disappeared. In the course of the 1917 revolution, right-wing political currents completely vanished from the Ukrainian scene, while Russian leftist groups in the U and Ukraine became Ukraina Ukrainized. A. Components of Ukrainian political thought 1. The Russian influence The influence of Russian political thought on the political life of pre-revolutionary Ukraine is to be explained not only by the influx of Russians into Ukraine and by the partial Russification of the Ukrainian intelligentsia, but by the enrollment of many conscious Ukrainian patriots in the Russian parties. These Ukrainians were primarily concerned with the abolition of autocracy, believing that as soon as dem democratic freedom was established in Russia, a national rebirth of the Ukrainian people would follow automatically. Having lost faith in the possibility of achieving anything through cultural activities, writes Professor Vasilenko Polonska, a number of Ukrainian patriots in the 1870s became members of the Russian revolutionary organization known as the Narodnaya Volya, People's World or People's Freedom. The leader of the Narodnaya Volya, Andrei Zhelyabov, was himself a U of Ukrainian descent. Other members of Ukrainian descent in the group include the poet P. Hrab Hrabovi Hrabovsky, Sofi Perovska, a descendant of Hedman er Ro Rozumovsky, D. Kibalchich, V. Degaborki Morievich, Y. Stefanovich, and D. Lizogub. Such collaboration between Ukrainian and Russian revolutionaries, it might seem, would have, would have run counter to the Ukraine struggle for liberation, but such leading Russian revolutionaries as Alexander Herzen and Mikhail Bakunin had been sympathetic to the Ukrainian struggle and had strongly denounced the imperialism of the Tsars. For example, Bakunin had written, Russian social revolutionaries aim first of all at the destruction of our state, in order that a union of Slavic peoples may be established it it is first necessary that the Russian Empire should fall to pieces. It must also be borne in mind that the Tsar's government, to use Dmitry Doroshenko's words, persecuted even scholarly research devoted to the ethnographic and historical character of the Ukrainian people. Hence, Ukrainian sentiment could be expressed only in belles lettres, without the slight, slightest impact on real life. Under such conditions, att attempts to cultivate Ukrainian culture appeared vain to everyone, but those with an inexhaustible faith in the future, like the members of the Hromada, it is not surprising, therefore, that the more ac active elements among the Ukrainian intelligentsia turned away from the dull and seemingly hopeless cultural work undertaken by the members of the Hromada and by the Ukrainophiles, as Ukrainian patriots were then called. And that, together with the Russian revolutionaries, they attempted to pull down that prison of peoples, the Russian Empire. In view of such close ties between the Russian and Ukrainian opposition to Tsarism, it was natural that Zhilyabov proposed to Drahomanov, at that time the ideological leader of the Ukrainian revolutionaries, that he, rep that he represented the Narodnaya Volya abroad. Indeed, by the end of the 19th century, the Ukrainian revolutionary movement bore the stamp of Russian revolutionary thought. Of the representatives of the Ukrainian intelligentsia in the late 1890s, Doroshenko writes that although they belonged to a new generation, and were inspired by national ideals, they had brought up in the spirit of the old Russian radical and social ideas and views which exerted a powerful influence over even the most politically conscious Ukrainians. The pioneers of the Ukrainian national and political revival, writes Isaac Mazepa in similar vein, could not, in view of almost 200 years of Russian rule over the Ukraine, escape from the influence of Russian political ideology. Ukrainians had come to believe that a political and social revolution, rather than peaceful cultural progress, offered the only road to Ukrainian liberation. At the same time, however, Russian revolutionary thought itself was under the influence of current Western European ideas, then attempting to formulate basic laws which would explain the development of European nations. In all circles of Russian society, and especially in socialist groups, according to Mazepa, there was such wide enthusiasm for everything European that often political parties of Tsarist Russia were quite uncritically borrowed Western European models for their ideas and organizations. 
Ukrainians were therefore inclined to regard Russian political thought merely as an intermediary between themselves and Western Europe. It was the official barring of cultural development for, the U for Ukraine, according to Doroshenko, which led to the disillusionment of the young Ukrainian radicals of the 1890s and their negative attitude toward all other solutions of the problem of a Ukraine revival, except in the form of a revolutionary movement. The fact that the Ukrainian leaders regarded their ultimate goal as the same as that of the Russian revolutionaries led to yet closer ties with them. During the revolution of 1905, when a split occurred in the ranks of the revolutionary Ukrainian party, RUP, founded in Kharkiv in 1900, the leaders of the schism who took the Ukrainian Social Democratic Union, Ukrainska Socialdemokratichna Spilka, referred to as the Spilka, into the RSDRP, believed that Ukrainian liberation would be decided not by national, by national but by social factors and by the general political situation in the Russian Empire. It is unnecessary to worry whether the Ukrainian people will feel nationally conscious, wrote one of the Spilka's leaders, Oleksandr Skoropis-Yoltukhovsky. The important thing is that they be politically and, so, and socially conscious. They cannot be anything but Ukrainian. This atmosphere of trust in the Russian revolutionary democrats, which even the most radical Ukraine revolutionaries shared, lasted down to an, an to and including the period of the revolution of 1917. It was to leave its mark on Borotivism, to the cult of the peasant. The orientation of Ukrainian political thoughts toward the peasantry, which before World War, World War I constitu constituted over 80% of the total population in Ukraine, was evident as early as the 1840s in the Brotherhood of St. Cyril and Mephi and Methodius. The intellectual leaders of the Brotherhood put forward as their task the cultural and social emancipation of the peasant masses. Indeed, it can be said that before the revolution of 1917, the concepts of Ukraine and Ukrainian tended to be treated as, synonym as synonymous with peasant. Young Ukrainians for Pol from Polonized families who, in the 1860s, devoted themselves enthusiastically to the Ukrainian national movement were dubbed peasant lovers, chlopomane, by the Polish gentry. The peasantry was also the social basis of Drachomanov's teachings, and their ro remote past in the view of Drachomanov's Russian biographer, David E. Zaslavsky, he saw the democratic Cossack, Cossack system and the Zapor Zaporozhskaya siege which in its social economy was close to that of the, prim of the primitive commune. According to the brochure, Mikhailo Petrovich Drahomanov, published in 1897 by a group of Ukrainian Marxist social democrats, Drahomanov's ideal was a peasant state with anarchist production. His strong point was that his teaching compelled the people in Galicia and Russian Ukraine, Nanipryanska Ukraina, to turn to the peasant masses neglected and downtrodden by the course of history. Likewise, the peasantry provided the social basis for the Ukrainian Radical Party, the first political party in Galicia, which was founded in 1890. According to the anonymous author of the contemporary brochure Radicali Radicalism, Radicals and Radicalism, the party is founded on the basis of scientific socialism and accepts all the consequences of their premise. However, the party does not agree in every respect with the wor workers' socialist parties for while the latter are active among urban workers, the Ukrainian radicals work among the peasants. Similarly, the first Ukrainian political party in Russian Ukraine, the RUP, devoted most of its attention to the village proletariat and the landless of, um, of impoverished peasantry, despite the fact that it had been created by Marxist socialists. And when the Spilka united with the RSDRP in 1906, it endeavored within the RSDRP to work among the peasants, not only in, the, in Ukraine but in other lands of the Russian state. Whenever Ukrainian political parties tried to ignore the peasants, they became small groups without any significant influence on Ukrainian political life. Such, for example, was the fate of the party led by Mykola Mi Mikho Mikhnovsky, the Ukrainian People's Party, which, seemed from, which se se seceded from the RUP in 1902. It did not extend beyond the limits of a small group of intellectuals, and its play had no significant part in the Ukraine liberation movement, neither did it have any influence on the internal evolution of the RUP itself. A similar fate befell Ukrainian non-socialist liberal groups. Thus, the Ukrainian Democratic Party, the Ukrainian Radical Party, a group which broke away from the first mentioned party, the Ukrainian Radical Democratic Party formed from elements of the two preceding parties, and the Society of Ukrainian Progressives, which was created to replace the last named party, all remained small groups of intellectuals. Their attempts to assume the then-fashionable so socialist coloring represented by Michnovsky 
Mikhnovsky's socialistic declarations and the re renaming of the Society of Ukraine Progressives in 1917 as the Ukrainian Party of Socialist Federalists, UPSF, were of no avail in strengthening them. They did perform an important function by providing centers for intellectual life, but they failed to attract a mass following. Even after the revolution of 1905, when it became possible to form opposition groups and when liberal parties were established in, in Ukraine, the importance of appealing to the peasantry was generally recognized. It was for this reason that during the 1917 revolution, the Ukrainian landowners headed by Serhii Shemet and his brother Volodymyr and Mykola formed form the Ukraine Democratic Agrarian Party with a disti distinctly peasant coloring. Similarly, the leader of Ukraine conservatism and monarchism, Vyacheslav Lip Lipinski, an exile from the summer of 1919, made his chief work letters to brother agriculturists and appealed to the peasants. The cult of the peasant limited the appeal of the Ukrainian political movement in the resuified Ukrainian cities, the main politically developed centers. Only after 1917, under the Ukrainian People's Republic, which was created primarily by the support of the peasants, were the Ukrainian towns gradually de -russified. Although the majority of the urban population was ethnically Ukrainian, most of the inhabitants did not regard themselves as Ukrainian. The de of the towns was to progress at an increasing tempo under the Soviet regime until 1943. Thus, the mainstream of the RUP, the Ukraine Social Democratic Party, USDRP, which in theory rested on the support of the workers, would whatever mass following it had to the, to the peasants. The creation of a strong peasant party in 1917, the Ukraine Party of Socialist Revolutionaries, UPSR, brought about a decline of the USDRP's influence in the village. Indeed, the main factor which was to divide the UPSR from the USDRP was the fact that the former was primarily a peasant party, while the latter was a workers' party. In 1917, the USDRP in Luhansk, the membership of which consisted, of, consisted chiefly of workers, passed the following characteristic resolu resolution. In view of the fact that no Ukrainian SR organization yet exists for the Luhansk pe peasants who were in danger of being led away by the Russian SRs, the local USDRP has offered some of its members to create in Luhansk a branch of the U UPSR. The eventual success of the Brojbisti was due to the fact that they had the support of the peasants. Conversely, the Marxist Workers' Party, the Ukraine Communist Party, Ukapiste, failed to achieve similar success. 3. Romantic nationalism, the search for self-existence. A characteristic aspect of all Ukrainian political life, both before and during the revolution, was its enthusiasm for national romanticism, its appeal to Ukrainian history and tradition. These features were to add a distinctly nationalist coloring to such political trends of the extreme left as Ukrainian communism and Borishbism, in spite of their internationalist programs. It is true, of course, that leftist movements of all oppressed peoples tend to be tinged with, na tinged with nationalism. The national aspect became especially apparent in the case of those Ukrainian political fi figures who later seceded from the Russian to the Ukrainian camp. The old Bolshevik Vasil M. Shakrai, who after, who after 1918 advocated the creation of an independent Ukrainian Communist Party, was to appeal in his writings to the national consciousness of the Ukrainians and other oppressed peoples. Another old Bolshevik, Yuri F. Lepchinsky, later became an ardent advocate of Ukrainization, and a similar change occurred in Mykola Oskripnik's views. It is important to note that transferring from a Russian political party to its Ukrainian counterpart entailed a change of mentality and style on the part of the person concerned, despite the similar programs of the two parties. Not only was it characteristic of these Ukraini Ukrainized Russian politi politicians to re repudiate their previous stand on the national problem, inevitably they refashioned their entire political education according to new Ukrainian needs. This was true both of the neophytes who left the Russian parties and, to a large, large extent, also Ukrainian intellectuals who had been brought up in the Russian school of, of thought and who, upon returning to the Ukrainian fold, had to repudiate their past associations with Russians. It is true that most Ukrainian political parties were formed as counterparts in name and doctrine of Russian political parties. In the course of time, however, they became totally alienated from their Russian models, developing a different point of view on almost every important issue. It is significant that when the Borodbisti declared their opposition to the leadership of the UPSR, 
They did not follow the example of the Russian left SRs, but they called themselves internationalists. B. Ideological pre precursors of Borodjbism. 1. Drahomanov, the father of Ukrainian political parties. Mikhailo P. Drahomanov is just regarded as the father of Ukrainian political parties. A highly cultured man, Drahomanov rose far above the level of all the Russian emigres occupying in Geneva, a place comparable to that held by Lavrov in Paris. Having been sent abroad by the Kiev and Romada to protest the ban on Ukraine publications and cultural activities in Russia, he initiated the periodical Romada, in which he attacked the non-political thinking of the Ukrainians at home and of the Russian populists, pleading for an active, decisive and revolutionary struggle. This development took place in the 1880s, a time of darkest reaction through the Russian Empire following the assassination of Alexander II. The Ukrainians were so terrorized and oppressed that the very members of the Kiev and Hromada, who, who had sent Rahmanov abroad for the express purpose of conducting political propaganda in 1886, sent him a letter calling his activity harmful to the Ukrainian cause. In their letter, they recommended that he confine his activities to informing the world of conditions in Ukraine and to writing for the legal Russian press. When Drahomanov refused to comply, his voice from abroad, according to Dmitro An Antonovich, fried more than it, it attracted. Nevertheless, because Drahomanov remained undis undismayed, his work appealed to some of the young Ukrainians, who now turned their backs on the cultural work of the Ukrainophiles and demanded a revolutionary solution of the Ukrainian problem. Operating side by side with the cultural circles, Drahomanov circles of students now read the writings of Drahomanov in secret gatherings. The political impact of Drahomanov's ideas was first felt in Galicia, where under the relatively liberal Austrian con constitutional monarchy, conditions were more, f more favorable to political action than in Russian Ukraine. The result was the creation in Galicia in 1890 of the Ukrainian Radical Party, the first modern Ukrainian party, its program was one of non-Marxist ethical socialism of the kind that Drahomanov had always advocated. In 1896, a year after Drahomanov's death, the leaders of this party commented, His ideas were not expressed in vain, they have become the foundation of the Ruthenian and Ukrainian radical party in Galicia and in eastern Ukraine. Under the influence of Drahomanov's writings and of French and German literature, these young Ruthenians turned socialist. As has already been seen, this party recognized the need to turn to the peasantry. On the national problem, the program of the Radical Party called for the independence of Rus Ukraine in order that, as in Khmelnytsky's day, all oppression may be destroyed and just law and order established. In the 1890s, however, a young group was formed within the Radical Party, which accepted a social democratic platform, that is, the Marxist doctrine oriented toward the workers rather than the peasants. This group provided the first Marxist critique of Drahomanov. One of its members, Julian Batshinsky, uh, in the work Ukraina i Redenta, published in Lviv in 1895, argued for an independent Ukraine on the basis of an analysis of economic development in Eastern Europe. 2. Marxism enters Ukraine. Events in Galicia had reper repercussions in a Russian Ukraine. The young Ukrainian progressive, chiefly those who had received their political education in Drahomanov circles, writes Antonovich, having observed Galician life, began to sympathize with the Radical Party. In 1893 to 1894, the entire student Romada in Kiev, led by the young poet and student of philosophy Ivan Steshenko, began to lose interest in the cultural and non-political aspects of the Ukrainian movement and declared itself in favor of Ukrainian political radicalism. But there were also other reasons why the younger generation of, at the opening of the 20th century turned to the, cre to the creation of political parties. One was the influence of Marxism, the other the development of industry. By the end of the 19th century, the increasing industrialization of, of Ukraine provided a fertile ground for Marxism in the new urban working class which was being created. With the failure of populism in the 1880s, both in, in Ukraine and in Russia, Marxism seemed too many to provide the, re the revolutionary solution. It is, not, is, it is noteworthy that the first Marxist critique of the Russian populists in the 1870s had been Drahomanov's friend Mikola E. Zyber, a professor at Kyiv University. A Ukrainophile and a member of the Hromada, Zyber was also one of the first to translate Marx into Russian. 
The strength of the Marxist ideology in Ukraine can be seen from the fact that of the five social democratic groups which participated in the formation of an all-Russian social democratic party in Minsk in 1898, three were from, from Ukraine, although they regarded themselves as Russian. Particularly noteworthy among the, among the many Marxist groups which dotted the Russian Empire in the 1890s was the one formed in Kyiv under the leadership of Ivan Steshenko and Lesya Ukrainka, Drahomanov's niece, later a, fa a famous poet. The brochure Mikola Petrovich Drahomanov, published in 1897 by this group, was devoted to a Marxist analysis of Drahomanov's ideas. It was this pamphlet which, as has been seen, defined the strong point of Drahomanov's teachings as the effect they produced of compelling the people in Galicia and Russian Ukraine to turn to the peasant masses. The weakness of Drahomanov's social and economic outlook, the analysis continued, was its failure to note that the peasantry is not entirely homogenous. To begin thinking about the peasantry as a whole means very little. The modern class principle of sociology demands clarification as to which class of the peasants one is defending, for only then can sympathy for the peasants have concrete value. Nonetheless, Drahomanov's ideas were praised. His honest and wise pen never tired of working for the Ukrainian cause. The Galician radical movement, in, part in particular, owes him a great deal. His constant reminder that Ukrainians must not stand in line behind the Russian radical groups, but must form their own national group to work among the people, has great importance even now. The activity of Drahomanov, the experience of the Galician radical party, and the pronouncement of the young Marxists in Russian Ukraine together with the increasingly revolutionary atmosphere at the turn of the century, all contributed to the creation of the first Ukrainian political party in Russian Ukraine. This was the RUP, formed on February 11, 1900 in Kharkiv, where the influence of the non-political Ukrainophiles was not so strong as in Kyiv. C. The experience of the revolutionary Ukrainian party, RUP. A central role in the political life of Russian Ukraine in the early 20th century was played by the RUP and its successor, the USDRP, the name the party assumed as its congress in December 1905, following the splitting off of the Spilka group. The RUP is to be credited with the final development of the idea of a Ukrainian national revolution and with the formation of the definitive type of Ukrainian revolutionary. The latter was now reflected in the novels of Volodymyr Vinichenko and Mikhailo Kotsubinsky and in the poems of Lesya Ukrainka and Oleksandr Oles. This generation was to live to see the revolution of 1917 and the emergence of a younger generation, many of whom would enroll in the ranks of the Brodjibiste. It is important, therefore, to analyze in some detail the ideas motivating the RUP and its offering, the USDRP and the Spilka. The difference between Ukrainian and Russian political parties in, the Ukra in Ukraine was now clear, and these three parties were to influence the Brodjibiste. 1. The problem of national liberation. The idea of national liberation was central to the post postulate of a Ukrainian revolutionary party independent of the Russian parties. In the half decade of 1900 to 1905, the RUP was agitated by a heated debate over the question whether an independent party was necessary or not. On the one hand, the tradition of the 19th century called for a united front with the, Rus with the Russians in the struggle against Tsarist autocracy. On the other hand, by the turn of the century, it was becoming increasingly evident that Russian opposition to the regime did not necessarily include approval of the liberation movements of the non-Russian peoples of the empire. Russian non-socialist liberals were prepared to make only small concessions in the cultural field, while the socialists, despite their talk of self-determination, Lenin even advocated self-determination up to secession, were in fact denying this right in other sections of their programs. Moreover, after 1905, no Russian socialist made such extreme statements on the subject as had Bakunin. It was becoming apparent that the liberation of the non-Russian peoples would have to be the concern of these peoples alone, not of the Russian revolutionaries, hence the necessity for the creation of Ukrainian political parties. 2. Formulation of the National Program The first platform of the RUP, published in 1900, under the title Samostina Ukraina, an independent Ukraine, was drafted by the nationalist Mikola I. Michnovsky. In this document, the aim of the party was stated to be one indivisible, free and independent Ukraine from the Carpathians to the Caucasus. The platform sharply criticized the non-political Ukrainophiles of the older generation. 
Ukraine is for the Ukrainians, it stated, and we cannot lay down our arms as long as one enemy is left in our territory. Forward, since we can neither hope for any favors nor look back. In 1902, however, the socialist leaders of the RUP declared in their theoretical organ Haslo watchword that the final goal of the party was an independent Ukrainian republic of the working masses with socialized means of production, nationalization of the land, and the dictatorship of the proletariat. Repealed by this Marxist approach, Mikhnovsky withdrew in 1902 to form his own party, the Ukrainian People's Party, which as has, which as has already been observed, remained small because it failed to take account of the peasantry. The following year, Haslo admitted that the idea of Ukrainian independence has its value, but we must recognize that this program betrays the lack of a socialist outlook. The project Prohrami RUP, draft program of the RUP, printed in 1903, claimed therefore that the RUP shares the basic principles, aims the tactics of international social democracy, the draft program clearly defined the social demands of the party and on the national problem, said the attainment of autonomy with a separate legislature as the party's practical minimum demand. It should be pointed out that after 1905, the USDRP was obliged, for tactical reasons, to take this, shame half, this same halfway position on, in, its, in its plank on the national problem. Mazepa explains this approach to the national problem by the Ukraine parties in the following manner. If we compare these declarations of Ukraine political organizations and political leaders of the period prior to the revolution of 1917 with the declarations and programs of other subjugated peoples, we are bound to observe that great difference between those nations with a historical and mature state consciousness and the, and the Ukraine which lacked, which lacked that consciousness. Thus the Poles, for instance, always aimed at the restoration of the Polish state within its historical boundaries, including even Lithuania, Belarusia, and, 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 and half of Ukraine. Similarly, the Irish in their struggle against England stressed their historical rights to an independent state. In Ukraine, the loss of state consciousness was the, re was the result of the prolonged domination of Russian education. Therefore, Ukrainian political ideas after the revolution of 1905 only reached halfway to independence. The idea of complete Ukrainian independence could gather strength only after the downfall of the Tsarist regime. Meanwhile, the era of Ukrainian political history which begins with Drahomanov and ends with the revolution of 1917 was a period of transition from the cultural to the political phase in the development of a regeneration. 3. Nationalism splits the RUP Although some Ukrainian revolutionaries underestimated the importance of the national problem, the debate on this is issue finally brought about a split within the RUP at its Congress in December 1904. One group, led by Marian Melenevsky, pseudonym Basok, began negotiating with the Russian Social Democrats with a view to a possible merger of the two parties. Another group within the RUP, headed by Mykola Porsche, demanded that the party program include an appeal calling for the independence of Ukraine. Such a clause, Melen Melenvsky's group believed that would, believed would isolate the RUP from the Russian Social Democrats and the Jewish Bund. But no official conclusion was reached, for on January 12, 1905, when the revolution was gathering momentum, Melenevsky's group issued a declaration calling the majority of the RUP bourgeois radicals taking the name Ukrainian Social Democratic Union, the Spilika. This group regarded itself as consisting of, a proletarian, of proletarian elements and declared that a centralized proletarian party for Russia as a whole was a necessity, thereupon it, it announced its willingness to join the RSDRP on the basis of autonomy. The statute by means of which the Spilika was accepted in the, into the RSDRP stated the Ukrainian Social Democratic Union is part of the RSDRP and, an, and aims at the organization of the Ukrainian-speaking proletariat. 4. The Lesson of the Spilka During the revolution of 1905, the Spilka proved to be more active among the Ukrainian peasant masses than the RUP-USDRP. It welcomed agrarian unrest among the peasants and supported the, part the partition of the larger land estates. The RUP-USDRP, on the other hand, following the tradition of Western European socialists, condemned the spontaneous peasant uprisings in a resolution at its Congress in December 1905 as the product of petty bourgeois instincts which are attempting to turn back the wheel of history 
to the small holding system, therefore the uprisings are completely reactionary. Later events showed that this peasant movement was not so much a turning back the clock of history as a mobilization of the masses against, against autocracy. It is noteworthy that in the elections to the Second State Duma, which convened in 1907, the Spilka elected 14 members while the USDRP elected only one. Although the Spilka hoped to become the only fully Ukra Ukrainized social, democra social democratic organization in, in Ukraine, in effect the RSDRP treated the Spilka not as its local branch in, the U in Ukraine, but as a peasant section. It even suggest su suggested that the Spilka become a peasant section of the RSDRP for the whole of Russia. Fedenko has written that it would be quite superficial and historically incorrect to regard the collaboration of the RUP members with the Russian Social Democrats as a national treason. One has to understand the conditions which prevailed in, the, in Ukraine at that time and the feeling of these Ukrainian politicians of the Spilka who collaborated with the Russians. Aside from a somewhat naive cosmopolitanism, they were also motivated by the hope of extending sources ideas in a Ukrainian form over the entire over the entire Ukraine. The leader of the Spilka, Melinevsky, in his open letter to comrades from the Ukraine Social Democratic Spilka and the Ukraine Social Democratic Workers' Party, published in the Ukrainian SD monthly Nasholos, Our Voice, in Lviv in 1912, wrote that the Spilka had merged with the revolutionary current and had become an inseparable part of it. It had become the soul of the revolution throughout the greater part of the Ukrainian territory. By being Ukrainian and carrying on its mission in the Ukrainian language, it contributed much to the social, political and national education of the masses. It is significant that the two most prominent leaders of the Spilka, Melinevsky and, Sk and Skoropis Yolutkorshivsky, did not return to the, USDR to the USDRP after the dissolution of the Spilka, but went over to the nationalist camp. During World War I, they formed in Vienna the Union for the Liberation of, the, of Ukraine, which propagated the dismemberment of the Russian Empire and the establishment of a Ukrainian state. The history of the Spilka, therefore, confirms, that, confirms the thesis advanced earlier, that beginning with the second half of the 19th century, Ukrainian participation in Russian political parties was motivated not by a denial of Ukrainian aspirations, but by a desire to encompass the downfall of autocracy in the shortest possible time. Nevertheless, the leaders of the Spilka, like the Borodbiste and Ukapiste, who were to follow them, failed to realize that by becoming dependent upon the Russian parties, they had lost their freedom of action, especially in one vital sector, the national liberation of Ukraine. <laughs>